Okay, now for part B of question number eight, sorry, actually part C of question number eight from M1 June 2019. Um, now in this question, we are told um, at the instant when particle P has moved a distance D upwards from its initial um, position, okay, particle R separates from particle Q, okay, and falls away. In the subsequent motion, particles P and Q continue to move and particle P does not reach the pulley. Um, at the instant when particles R and Q separate, particle Q is at the point A, continues to downwards, particle Q then comes to instantaneous rest at the point B. Okay, so basically, um, in the beginning, it, these particles move up a certain distance, which is a distance d. Okay, so a particle moves up a distance d meters. Oops, what happened there? Distance d meters. Okay, so that's the distance d meters that it moves upwards. All right, and then at that point, r separates from q. Okay, so let's have this point where it's moved up d meters. That means q has dropped d meters. Okay, if p moved up d meters, then q must have dropped d meters. At that point, r separates. So we're going to take this as situation two after r separates, and this is situation one before r separates. Okay, so of course the acceleration will change now, okay, in, in this situation because now there's less mass acting on this direction. You're going to have here now 3 mg, the weight acting here, and here you have 4 mg as before on this one. So the tension in the string will also change. So let's call it tension dash and tension dash. And the acceleration now will change, okay, so the acceleration now will be different, okay. In fact, you know, it's still moving upwards in the beginning, and this is still moving downwards in the beginning, but you can see that the acceleration is going to be a negative acceleration. That's why Q comes to rest. Basically, P will rise a little bit, and because of the, the, the new acceleration, which will be negative, it's going to come to instantaneous rest, and it's going to fall. So, of course, the same thing will happen to Q, but in the opposite direction. So Q is going to continue falling, but with a negative acceleration, Okay, so it's going to come to instantaneous rest and it's going to start moving upwards. So we need to know, okay, that distance that it falls. This is the point A when it, it's R separates, okay, and this is the point B when it comes to instantaneous rest, okay, after R separates. So particle Q then comes to instantaneous rest at the point B. So we got to find this distance here between A and B in terms of d so this distance of, let me call it x the distance that it moves under the new acceleration which is exactly the same distance as this moves under the new acceleration because they're connected together okay so we can consider a or uh, particle q or p and we can get that same distance okay so we need to find what was the speed okay of this system at the point when r separated okay and we also need to know what the new acceleration is because we're going to use it Okay, we're going to use su to find that distance. S will be our x. U will be the speed that it, it was moving at at the point when R separated. It was moving at that point. Okay, so our S is x. Our U is the speed that it was moving at at the point it separated. Okay, our V would be 0. And our A would be a new acceleration. It won't be 1 over 9G because it's a new situation. So we need to find what this is and what this is in order for us to answer this question. So to find u, let's go back to the original situation. Let's go to situation one, okay? Where we have got to find what is the speed it reaches when it's moved d meters, okay? So we can consider q and r, we can consider p, they'll both have the same speed. Okay, so it doesn't matter now whether I consider P or Q, they both have the same speed in terms of, you know, the magnitude. And they move the same distance, okay, the distance D and the distance X on this side will be the same as the distance D and distance X on that side. So if we find what that X is, it's the same as finding what that X is. So if I consider P, okay, let's think about um, its situation. S, U, V, A, and T, SUVAT. 
Okay, so in situation one, it's moved d meters before r separated from q. The initial speed, it was released from rest in the beginning, the beginning of the question. v, we need to find what its speed was at the time when r separated, that's what we need to find. Acceleration was 1 over 9 g meters per second. And time, we don't really need to know that. So we can find what the v is now by using v u a s v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s. So you've got v squared equals u squared, which is 0, plus 2 times 1 over 9 g times s, which is d. So we can say v squared is equal to 2 g d over 9. Okay, we can leave it in terms of that for now. The second thing we need to do is look in the second situation here. We've got to find the new acceleration. Okay, we've got to find what a dash is, the new, new, new acceleration. Okay, so what we can do is we can say that um, if we consider p. Now, although we know that the acceleration is going to be acting downwards, I'm going to take up as positive because I know I consider p, I know it's moving up in the beginning, it's moving up but slowing down, so it's decelerating. But I'll take up as positive as I know it's moving up, because it continues to move up, as the question tells us. If you look at the question, it tells us p continues to move up, okay, so they continue to move in the same direction basically until it comes to instantaneous rest. So now, um, if we take up as positive, we've got t dash minus 4mg is equal to the mass times acceleration, which is 4m, and the new acceleration, we'll call it a dash. Okay, and if we consider q, which is still moving down, take down as positive, we're going to have uh, 3mg minus the new tension, t dash, equals 3m times the new acceleration, which is a dash. So if I add these two equations together, the t's will be eliminated. I'll have minus 4mg plus 3mg, which is minus mg, is equal to 7ma. Of course, the m's cancel, and you're left with a equals minus 1 seventh g, which makes sense because it's going to come to rest eventually, deceleration. Okay, so that's the new acceleration, and that's the speed at which the particles reached when this new acceleration, at the point when this new acceleration came into effect. So now we've got what we need to answer the question to find what that distance x is. So as I said, s equals, we've got s subat, we know what s is. Well, we have to find what s is, that will be our answer. u is the speed it had, which is going to be basically this. Let me just write it as u squared. 2gd over 9 that g and v is equal to 0 because it comes to instantaneous rest a is negative 1 over 7g and t we don't really need to know here so we can use again v squared equals u squared plus 2as so if you use v squared equals u squared plus 2as we can then solve the problem we need to find what that s is the s is our x so v is zero u squared is 2gd over 9 plus 2 times minus 1 over 7g times s which is our x which we have to find so if we rearrange this equation we will have um, 2 over 7 g x equals 2 g d over 9 and the g's will cancel and the 2's will cancel and you're left with x whoops what happened there you're left with so it's lagging a bit here I hope the sound's okay so x is equal to 7d over 9. And that is our answer in terms of d. Okay, so it says find the distance d 
Um, okay, let's say D meters. So let's say D meters. Seven over seven over nine D meters. That's the the value of x. Okay, so the distance that p moved up altogether is the same as the distance that q moved down. So it doesn't matter whether you consider q or p, it will be the same answer. Okay, so find this in terms of d, the distance a, b. Okay, so there we have our answer to part c of this question. And the question is complete. Okay, thank you for watching.